Hello everyone and welcome to another video. Now, The Elder Scrolls Skyrim is one of those games that has so much replay factor. It seems like every time I jump back into the world of Tamriel, I find something new to see or do that I might have missed on a previous run. This is certainly one of my favourite go-to games that I play when I don't want to think too much, I just want to explore. The modding community has also and continues to create and release fan-made content, so even if the vanilla experience gets a bit tedious, you can install a mod and try something that you've definitely never experienced before, be it a new quest, location, or maybe even a unique set of armour. You may have noticed by now that I'm playing the original version of the game, released all the way back in 2011, and not the special edition version that also came out on PS4 and Xbox One. From a technical standpoint, I prefer the original title thanks to its wider support for older PC hardware. Its compatibility with DX9 graphics cards also means that you don't have to have a fancy gaming rig or even a mid-range gaming PC to play this game with smooth frame rates. In fact, Bethesda's creation engine, which was also used for Fallout 4 and 76, is best suited to 60 frames per second maximum, so again you're not going to need a super powerful rig to make that happen. But why is that? It's very well documented that running with over 60 frames per second messes with the game's physics, and even though the game will target and achieve a fairly solid 75 FPS on my 75Hz display, it's easy to tell that it's running too fast. Character movement is too quick, and although this could be seen as a good thing, it does still cause a couple of issues with object physics. I've seen floating cows, food on tables flying all over the room at the slightest touch, and signs on buildings getting stuck mid-swing, just to name a few minor inconveniences. The bottom line though is that 60 frames per second will give you the best glitch-free experience in Skyrim, on paper anyway, as of course this wouldn't be a Bethesda game without a few unpatched bugs still lingering around. But how does all of this tie in with today's video? Well, nine years on and we're revisiting Skyrim to check out its performance using the recommended system specs. Almost a decade ago, the developers suggested an AMD or Intel quad-core processor, 4GB of RAM and a GTX 260 or HD 4890 with 1GB of VRAM. The 4890 was a 1GB card, but most 260s came with 896MB of GDDR3, though there were a couple of 1.7GB models. Regardless, we're using a GTX 260 in combination with 2011's AMD FX 4100, a chip that came out a month before the original version of Skyrim. So there's no specific CPU listed for this game, the specs just state an Intel or AMD quad-core. The FX chip may be a slightly unrealistic pairing for the 260, which would have already been available since 2008, and in modern games the FX chip might also still stand a chance, whereas the graphics card's lack of DirectX 11 support means it's deemed to some extent redundant, unless you want to play older games. Let's see how the almost decade old Skyrim though runs on the recommended requirements. In terms of the settings I went straight in at the high preset using 1920 by 1080 This includes 8x anti-aliasing and anisotropic filtering which in terms of the anti-aliasing is probably a bit overkill anyway and will put quite the strain on our GTX 260. First of all, I started the game in solitude and I noticed that despite my earlier tests, which were admittedly short 30 second walkabouts that occurred before recording, I was seeing a lot more frame time issues as well as a lower overall frame rate this time around. Using the external capture device and the GTX 260 meant that the ideal cap of 60 frames per second was back in place, though we didn't quite reach that, not even half of that at first. I decided that the best course of action was to unplug everything and start again, and it's a good job I did because this immediately made some hefty improvements to the overall frame rate. So the FX4100, GTX 260 and 4GB of 13.33MHz DDR3 memory in combination are producing an overall OK experience with these settings. The average frame rates and other performance metrics will be different depending on what part of the map you're exploring, so I've been sure to give you the relevant figures on screen in correspondence to specific places. 
Back in 2011, and the then current gen consoles, so PS3 and Xbox 360, would have run Skyrim with a 30 FPS target in mind at 720p with far less graphical fidelity. Therefore, this setup is already doing much better. Furthermore, some areas here gave us a near solid 60 FPS experience, but even the ones that didn't never dropped below 30. This was apparent even in the more populated towns and cities. The only part of the game that ran with a solid 30 FPS was the loading screens, which dropped to this frame rate in between gameplay. These only of course pop up if you're entering or exiting a building or loading a previous save game. I then jumped back into the game with anti-aliasing disabled which immediately improved the game's performance with this system. It seems so recently that 4GB of RAM was deemed a suitable amount for most games but I guess time really does fly especially in the world of games. I noticed that switching to 8GB briefly meant that the game used or reported to be using around 6GB of system memory so 4 is still a limiting factor. The thing I love about Skyrim is its ability to run on a wide variety of hardware. I've played this on a laptop, on a GPD win and I've also played it with integrated graphics. There are some limitations to the rule of oh it will run on anything of course though sometimes problems regarding super low end hardware can be resolved by using one of the many performance mods which aim to reduce graphical settings by even more. More than you can set yourself from the game's graphical options menu of course. With all that said then, Skyrim is still a very fun game to play and one that doesn't need very powerful hardware in order to play it. As a quick side note, the special edition or remastered version, whatever you want to call it, requires a DX11 supported GPU so it won't run on this system because of the GTX 260. That's mainly why I enjoy this OG release so much, even though it's hidden on Steam these days. You can still buy it, you just can't find it in the search. So there we go, I hope you've enjoyed this video. As you can probably tell over the Christmas period, not much uh, stuff is getting delivered. In fact, nothing's getting delivered. So I decided to take a look at a couple of my older games instead and see how they ran on hardware that I already own. I hope you've enjoyed this video nonetheless. A special thank you, of course, to all of you who have purchased the handmade hats that have been handmade by my sister for the channel. Um, there are more in stock if you want to check these out. I'll leave a link in the description, of course, down below. Thank you to all of you. If you haven't received it yet, you should do early next month, I'd imagine. But, uh, yeah, sending parcels and stuff, especially here from Kent in the UK, is pretty problematic right now. But that should be resolved very soon. As always, thank you so much for watching. If you enjoyed this video, leave a like on it. Leave a dislike if you didn't. Have a very happy new year. Subscribe to the channel if you haven't done so already. And hopefully I'll see you all in the next one.